Welcome to the High as Fuck Podcast with your boys, Matt Jackson, aka Joffrey Killer, baby, hey, and his limited addiction action, addiction. F- addition action figure. This is the High as Fuck Podcast. Take another hit, Joe. Motherfucking cool. cool. What's up, y'all? We y'all doing? We up We in are here. here. We are queer, and we are ready to... Yes, and we're weird, too. <laughs> we're going to give it to you like you've never been seen before. This show is going to be good. We're going to have a good show. We're back. We're back, baby. We're back. We're we back. feel good. I had a great weekend at the Fear Fest, y'all. Went to the Fear Fest, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Probably spontaneously through the show, so I don't do it all at once. And overwhelm y'all with that. But Jeepers Creepers was there. The Jeepers Creepers truck was there, Joe. It was a lit moment. That's like dope. I haven't actually been able to sit down and talk to you about any of that yet. But we're going to do a podcast on that anyway for the Frequency Podcast. So if y'all want to check out our new podcast, this is why I'm talking about this. It's because we're going to be doing the Frequency is going to be going in strong. And it's coming up. So it's going to be Frequency and Friends. <coughs> I think that sounds like a good the freaking name. Freaking Friends Frequency Podcast. The Freaking Friends. I don't know. Frequent Frequent Friends Frequency Friends Frequency Friends Podcast. Frequency Friends. Frequency Friends Podcast. It's still well. I don't know. I mean, it's good. the Frequency Podcast is basically what it's called, and it's going to be on the channel Jaw Freak Killer. That is J A H Space. F R E A K space K I L L and do not forget this A H A H not E R not just an A A H complicated it but J A H space F R E A K K I L L A H go look that up go subscribe now it's 109 subscribers let's get more subscribers going for that so the frequency podcast can get more than just like 40 40 views on it when i'm doing them we've already did i've already did michael myers i got it started trying to see and just like you know see the waters real quick just testing my like uh ideas and like my whatever and see what works and like it just sounds cool. Frequency podcast. There is a movie called like The Frequency, it. and my name is Freak, and the channel's Jaw Freak Killer, and so you'll get some character stuff on that. Uh, I get a little animated. I do a character sometimes when I'm reviewing it. I review it in a character's voice, so it gets kind of fun on that show. So that show is definitely one of those shows that you can be yourself on it, and it's kind of kooky and funny, and it's not really. It's going to be when you have more people in the dynamics. I want it to be kooky and crazy. But with me, I just go in with like a, it's Joffrey Gillia. And we're watching Halloween or something like that. And then some of it might be normal voice, blah, blah, blah. I go in and out of character. But that's because I'm trying to keep focused. But the Frequency Podcast is a fun podcast. Um, check it out on the Joffrey Killer channel. Yeah. And that's coming up. The first one that we're doing as a group is Coneheads we're this be Friday. Reviewing, well, talking we're, about. We're recording Friday. Discussing Coneheads. And, and we've got to discuss what cameo what day are that we... happening, Coneheads, of people that maybe yeah. you wouldn't have expected to be in that movie. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a lot of dynamics in that movie because of, like, I, that's one of my favorite movies of my whole childhood. Like,. Uh, the Coneheads probably means more to me than a lot of movies in life, you know. And, like, we're not going to be talking about that a lot. I just wanted to let y'all know that if any of y'all are interested in us, us. Us. The us, same guys. The plus, same guys. Plus. Plus Doug. Some friends. Our friend named Doug. Yeah. And we have my cousins wanting to be a part of it as well sometimes when he's in town in North Carolina or on the phone. Like, we call him and he's on the phone and everybody else is chilling. Yeah. And we have another friend that Doug has. That wants to get in on it. Mm. We've got quite a few freaking voices special that would guest. special guests, literally. But we're all a cast. We might not all be in it for the whole, not for the whole, like me and you are on it, or Doug would be. But we'll have special people coming on talking about special things and special, you know, and different. Like we're trying, like, <clears throat> yeah, no, we're trying to get happening with Jay on our show. Yeah, no, we're trying to get Jay in on this. And we can talk about superheroes on the frequency. We can talk about basically anything that's not wrestling. Yeah. Movies, whatever's freaky, whatever's scary. Mm-hmm. I do horror movies at the f- beginning just to get the frequency, like, kind of a, like, yes, I'm doing horror. 
And yes, I'm going to stick that. But I've also did like a movie called Beast, which is about animals, like mm. tiger or something like that. So there's a dynamic there. So anyway, I want y'all to go and like and subscribe to that. Comment, like, share. Comment, all that subscribe. Shit. Because now, since we're on the wrestling podcast, and y'all click the notification fans, bell. Notification bell at all times. We need that. And you can dedicate. You can, you can donate. Start, donate. Donate. Because we need to get donations for Chuck Singer. Donate. Because Chuck Singer, to Chuck our Singer. friend. Um, we had the podcast back uh, months ago, and we sat down and talked to him. Well, he's dying. Yeah, he's losing his life every minute. He texted me yesterday, and was and and I almost cried. And I'm sitting there in my own head with that, and I've been in my head with that this whole week that my friend is dying that we talked to on the podcast, and he don't have much longer. He said he's about to go. Like he's financially struggling. And his wife needs help with, you know, something. So if y'all want to donate, all the money that's coming in is going straight to Chuck Singer. So I'll be um, cash apping him every bit of money that gets sent <clears throat> to me if y'all want to donate. So um, right now, I just need y'all's love and support right now because there's a lot that we're going to be getting on to right now. So this is going to be a really good show tonight. And or day or whatever we've got night of champions we're talking about we're going to be talking about uh, double or nothing in this in this program here, but there's a lot of a lot more important things to get onto that I've kind of not not in a sense neglected or nothing but I feel like I've neglected to speak on this because it's been so hard to deal with like deal you know in a way not actually deal with but deal with knowing that. We're about to lose our friend. I've got his address. I've got all the information. Well, I don't know if it's whatever, whatever it is. I have have his information um, to send the money to and all that. So we need to help our friend out because he is literally like we don't know when he's going to go next, and we're supposed to be getting Abdullah the butcher on with him, and he wants to do that soon. So I think that's supposed to be happening this weekend. Mm -hmm. That's something else that I was supposed to be talking to you tonight. And but now that um th now that we're talking on the show, I can actually think clearer because we're talking show stuff, and I can actually sit down. And I've actually been gave, after the fear fest was a lot, you know. This whole week's been crazy because I've had a crazy week, and it's been fun. And uh, but like so now I'm actually getting a chance to sit down and talk to you. So this weekend I'm I'm trying to set it up to where we get the Abdullah the butcher, and I'm hoping he's I'm hoping this is you know legit. I don't want to doubt my shit. But he says he's got Abdullah the Butcher lined up for it. I've already set it up on Facebook to, to do this. Well, I think it's set up properly. And then we're supposed to be sitting down with Chuck sometime this weekend. I don't know when. Uh, I know we're busy Friday. I was thinking about squeezing in Friday <clears throat> at some point. So, I don't know. So, things are supposed to be happening with that. I need the donations. Or he needs the donations because his wife's going to be struggling after this. You know, like when that day comes, it's it's going to be done. But anyway, we are positive on this show. We live by the acronym P.O.P. -P, and we're going to start saying that more on the show, are we not? We live by P.O.P. -P, power of positivity. Of positivity. Because we are positive. We stay up. But we want to be real too, and so, and, and, and we so want to be do we friendly. like the Mustafa Ali positivity gimmick? Ah, uh, well, I'm really on this positive kick, and I have been for years now. Like you got to be positive, because if you're not positive in life, you're not going to get what you want. Right. You're not going to get shit. So then we the can shit's gonna not then be we there. cannot rag on the positivity gimmick of Mustafa, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa. Well, you know what? You know I'm just over negative. So, you know what, like, even with this wrestling shit, you know, in life itself, too. So, when y'all get stressed out and y'all get down about yourself, just pick yourself back up, brush yourself off, and keep going. It's power of positivity. Live by the acronym P-O-P, -P, positive, positive vibes at all times. And with this pay-per-view, I felt like there was a lot of positive in this pay-per-view because of, like, just what we've been looking forward to and stuff and about what, what we're about to get into. Okay. So about what we're going to get into. So I feel positive when it comes to wrestling and this so, show and everything that is going on. So When we talk <clears throat> about pay-per-view. Yeah. Every time we talk we about We start off with the intro. We talk about the intro. Triple H talked about a champion being strong. Yeah. He talked about the story. They talked about the storyline review and showed commercials 
They showed the beautiful new belt that was getting ready to go. They showed the storyline about Cody and everything that's been going on. Yep. <clears throat> And showed that when the when Brock broke Cody's arm, they showed all the storyline builds for all the stuff. Yeah, it was just beautiful. Like it was yeah. a great intro. Oh wow! It was it was amazing. Now, I'm just gonna be honest. I did miss this show, but we're gonna get through the show. Yeah. Now I know some things, but it's it's we're gonna get through it. And mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. then at the end of it, Triple H said, "Are you ready?" And then he said, "Are you ready?" I said, are you ready? This is Night of Champions. This makes me want to watch it so bad. It was so, like, the intro was so good. Finally watch it. And then we started. This is what, like, absolutely floored me, Matt. We started the pay-per-view with AJ versus Seth for the World Heavyweight Championship. That doesn't make any sense. No Brock. Like, Co- Brock didn't start it. Brock and Cody. He stayed till almost the end of the Jetta pay per view. What? Yeah. All the way through the end? Almost all the way to the wow, end. Wow, he didn't do the match first. He that's, was the second to last match. That's pretty insane. That's, that's like stuff we don't even think about, folks. Like, that Brock has stuck. With he went and was like with the whole night and up until what not the end but close enough to the end to where it's not normal for like Brock Lesnar to fucking be it. I mean, I don't even know my remote controls that right now. That's this true. is ridiculous. This is true, people. This is like problems we have right now. We don't know where the we remote don't know is. Where the remote is. Can you- I'm about to damn break down and just just punch people in the face. You want some of this? If you talk to me like that, boy, <laughs> we the highest fuck podcast. All right, we're good. And so, like, so Brock going second to last is kind of crazy, yeah. you know, for Brock to want to stay in Jetta that long. It just doesn't really make sense, right? That how he wanted to do that 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 you know Saturday night. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it was weird. That was a fear fest, and Brock's over there going second to last. Yeah, so. Kind of crazy when you're like in between on stuff. It's like, started, ah, I can't watch pay per view, but damn, I mean, famous people. They started you know? the pay per view with the World Heavyweight Championship, the brand new championship. Yeah, that is true. AJ, That's crazy. AJ and Seth Rollins. Put Brock on first. Anyway, so just kill Cody and get it over with. There was a crazy fucking match. AJ and Seth. Like, what? it was. See, that's why I want to find that remote, Beautiful. but we couldn't find the remote. Half moon salt into a reverse DDT. I'm going to see this shit. AJ and Seth tore the house down. Like, they did an F you into a knee to the neck. Oh, wow. It, Seth had him up on his shoulders, put him into a position where he flipped him. Yeah. Like John Cena does, and he brought him down neck first on his knee. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, Seth did a lot of stuff. Seth super kicked and pedigreed. And <laughs> Hell yeah. Did all um, that shit. Rollins won the championship. And then I asked myself, I was like, can we... What's she doing? I don't know. Anyway, keep talking. Then I ask myself, can we get Seth that bit to be a baby? Ah oh, man, I hate pockets right now. I hate pockets. My cat just pissed me off real quick. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Anyway, that's got to be. I, just, I got to. Ah, Nigger Smarin. We talk about the Broncos now. He was just go second to last, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 anyway, woo! It's it nice. was so fuck podcast, really boy. fucking good. Like Seth Rollins, AJ Styles. That was bad. Oh, wrong one. AJ went for a phenomenal forearm. Well, he can deserve that one. He jumped up, springboarded off the top rope into a phenomenal forearm. Yeah, 
and Seth super kicked him out of the air. Oh, damn. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's, that's, that's insane. Like, super kicking people out of the air. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Seth's got one of the best super kicks in the world. Anyway. He does. I, I, love a super, I love a super kick. I will not say it's better than Shawn yeah, Michaels. Yeah, it is. Shawn Michaels would be like almost falling when he does it. Sweet Chin Music was the best super kick in the business. Let me get one of them gummies you got right there, man. I'm over here looking at some damn sweet looking gummies. <sighs> this boy's got, we're going to go ahead and promote these motherfuckers. They're called Psychopath Gummies. 5,000 milligrams per pack. THCP, XTHCB, Delta 8, 250 milligrams per price, and they're grapes. You talk about. Seth is a Triple H guy. Seth is a Triple H guy. That is true. Yeah. And so I want you to know... I want you to know... That at the end of the match... Triple H brought the World Heavyweight Championship down to the ring. You only need one of these. And presented it to Seth. These things are good, boy. They're very sweet. Mm. Y'all gotta go get y'all some of those. Those are good. They're great flavored, I think. And try this down. I mean, vape. Do lost Mary blueberry raspberry lemon. That's a really good one right there. And one so of my anyway, favorite lost Mary flavors. That's gotta be man. That is that's one of my favorite. I'm gonna have to get that one next too. Now I gotta find mine. There mm. it is. All right, so I we got have this new one down there in Raleigh. Triple H. T I seven thousand Funky Republic. Triple H came down in the ring. He did. That's good that he's involved in this paper. And he like, pres- you know? hand presented the World Heavyweight Championship. Hell yeah. Mm. Mm. I remember that. My baby boy, he's he's good so, being baby. Um I guess being a meanie. I said Rollins countered a phenomenal forearm. <laughs> yeah. By super kicking him out Woo. of the air. But his knee gave out before he could fully punctuate the end of the match <laughs> with his curb stomp. Ooh. So. Get that AJ with a curb. With hair going fly. A subsequent pedigree. He did a pedigree but when his knee gave out with the curb stomp. Okay. And then he. Gave him enough time to power through the injury and <laughs> the fatal curb stomp, which is when he put AJ out. He pinned AJ. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, hell yeah, man. That's, that's fucking... That match sounds like I need to watch that like right now. It like was so... <laughs> I am sorry, guys. I am on a sneezing tangent. If you... What, everything that you would if imagine... You only smell through my If nose. you can imagine AJ versus Seth. Yeah. Like if you can imagine oh, I that know. match. I already know. I've seen this match before. It's a good match. It was exactly what it should have been. It was a good match. <laughs> Woo! Oh. So that was our first match. <laughs> and the first of our three main events. We're getting the 12 on sneeze. Three main events. Three main events. So we had Rollins... Defeating AJ Styles to win the vacant World Heavyweight Championship. They gave it a B plus. What? They so gave the it a B plus. This, their review was a B plus. Well, I honestly a? would give it an A, an eight point five, eight point seven five nine. Somewhere in there. Okay. Eight point five nine stars. That's what I was thinking. Not quite a ten, but Definitely a high end match. Like I would never give anything a ten. Yeah. So if I say it's a nine, yeah. it's pretty damn fucking good. Oh hell yeah. Well then, I mean, I go with your opinion on that. Like I said, guys, I was at the Fear Fest for Saturday and Sunday. Well, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was in Raleigh, and it was a long trip, dude. It was a great trip down there. It was freaking amazing, dude. I met the Toxic Avenger, and these people here need to hear this because I don't know if y'all go over there and watch my Frequency podcast to hear me talk about it when we talk about the Fear Fest on the Frequency. <clears throat> but I met the Toxic Avenger. He played the first two movies, or the first three, the first 
though the two third and the second and third movie met him met Jason met the guy who plays Jason Predator Robocop Derek Myers uh, Robert Muke fucking Seth Gillian from Walking Dead for my mom I got her a signed autograph you saw that upstairs got my mom a signed autograph Seth Gillian po- uh, picture for her birthday and the man signed it for free dude for absolutely free because it was her birthday and Mother's Day and I was like and I was doing it for my mother and she couldn't make it and all this other you know and he just felt that and I'm glad he felt that because my mom was happy with that like she you know, like put that thing on the wall like looks gorgeous I got the sign and autograph picture that's hanging on my wall of the main man I wanted and that was the Toxic Avenger and it's hanging right behind Joe's head and over there beside your head and it's the Toxic Avenger autograph right there on the wall yeah and it's autographed by the man. I watched him autograph it. I didn't get a picture with him because it charged me $20, but he did that for free That's for dope. my childhood because I walked up to him and I was like, man, I'm kind of, I was kind of nervous to come up here and talk to you, but you were, you're a, you were a big part of my childhood. My mom introduced me to you as a kid and like, you mean the world to me because you let us, you let that movie made us know that freaks are matter. You know, people who feel like they don't fit in and they're different. Um, that movie really taught a lot of stuff, you know, and man talked to me, the dynamics of the movie with me. And it was just a moment in my life that I'll never forget because I actually got to talk to the guy that did something for my little me myself Mm -hmm. when I was little and I was just like, so the whole experience, guys, was like, I was back in my childhood. Jeepers Creepers was there, the truck, all that cool stuff. All these famous people just standing there. We're sitting there talking to Robert Muke like I knew him for years. Crazy shit. But anyway, we're going to get into that on another podcast. But that is all I wanted to say about that. Then we had the second match. Because it was like relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Because of this, I was missing from action for Saturday. Right. Then we had Becky yeah. and Trish. Yeah. Becky and Trish. It was pretty. Well, Becky and Trish, nuts. I mean, that's, uh, that's going to be crazy anyway because you got an older lady versus someone who's still in their prime. Right. Know? She might have just had kids. But Trish. Was, uh, <clears throat> battered Becky. Like, she threw her into the steel steps. Oh, wow. At least twice. So they did some pretty hard spots. Yeah. It was pretty pretty dope match. Um, oh, yeah. So Trish lulled her to the outside. They fought on the outside for a long time. Yeah. And Trish... Almost got a count out victory over Becky. Like it was like at a eight. Oh wow. When or nine when Becky finally got in the ring. Huh. She was trying every under underhanded heel tactic she could think of. Yeah. It was really a spot fest for Trish doing oh, yeah, underhanded see, heel tactics. Becky's gotta work with her because she's older and you know, she's been out of the game for a while, so she's like, you know. Pretty cool. But Becky did some moves on her. She did some moves on Becky. They battered each other pretty bad. And then the surprise at the end. Yeah. Some fans caught a glimpse of a monitor under the ring All right. before the thing started. And they yeah. posted a tweet. And I never saw it. But then I understood when I saw that tweet later after. Yeah. Pay per view. Why that monitor was under the ring? Oh, Zoe Starks was hanging out under the ring in the Becky versus Trish Trish match. So she was hanging in there with a the hornswoggle. She was watching the monitor, obviously, so yeah. she could know when her cue was to come out. When they got through the rehearsed part of the match where she was supposed to appear or whatever. Yeah, that's so crazy. She, so she came out it like the first time that's happened and beat up Becky, you know, cause it feels like it is the first time. 
That somebody's popped out from under the ring? No, that they've had a monitor down there. That doesn't seem. I'm like... sure. I'm sure Hornswoggle had a monitor so he could wait. He knew. What oh his well, yeah, was. yeah. Never mind. Okay, never mind. I'm thinking about something else. All right, we're on the same page. <clears throat> Just a screen so they could yeah, see I what's going on. Y'all were seeing the monitor. I don't know. Anyway, I was thinking of something way different than that. No. But a fan caught an accidental glimpse oh, of it. Oh, okay. Before so the pay per view okay. started. I was kind of on that same page, but something about it didn't seem right. Anyway, so that match seems really exhilarating and crazy because of the Zoe Stark dynamic. Because Zoe Stark's just got brought in and she's big time. She's I getting think. a push with Becky, apparently. Already. That's, that's the good. only thing I can think of is that they're bu- building a feud with Becky for I that. Think, I think Becky wants to work with Zoe. I can see that. Yeah, because Becky Becky's probably gonna went push up and said, big, I want to work with Zoe. Becky's going to push l- new talent. She wants to push someone that's at her level. Yeah. She's looking for the next person to take her spot. Yeah. So, and that's going to be Zoe Stark. She's got to go home and be a mama. Yeah. You got to be a mama and a daddy. And you got to bring your kids in close. You got to be there for them. So, and you just got to keep your head up when you're a parent and just keep going. And that's what Becky needs to do. She just needs to get to where she can actually do that for herself so she can, like, you know, um, be with her kid and all that. But pushing big talent, pushing new talent, pushing talent that deserves it, that's what's up. Yeah. The NXT call-up, Zoe Starks attacked Lynch at ringside, allowing for Stratus to hit the Stratus faction for the three count. It was a good match. Yeah. These, these people gave it a C plus. Yeah. It was, like I said, kind of spot festy. Yeah. For Trish. And then there was the interruption. It really wasn't a great match. But again, like you said, Trish is a little older. Yeah. So a solid eight. Yeah. I mean, it was good. Not great. Yeah. Kind of just, Yeah. Anyway, we can move past that one then. We had Intercontinental Championship, Gunther. Gunther and Mustafa. We can Mustafa get to this quick Ollie. then, hopefully. No, hold on. Hold on. This man. Well, I guess we're not getting through it fast, guys. Went exactly as planned. Gunther wins, right? Yeah. But Mustafa, Mustafa's performance. I thought it was a really fucking good match. He did a good job. Yeah. And and Gunther was, of course, Gunther and whatever. And the Imperium, of course, they were, you know, they were what they are. Yeah. They're respectful to Ring and yeah. William Regal-like. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it was very Ring general. And, of yeah. course, I mean, just whatever. But Mustafa put on a good performance. And their mat, like, he made the match look good because he had the in-ring... High flying, fancy, exciting. Yeah. And then Gunther, of course, he's respectful. He's got a powerhouse. You know, he's a physical powerhouse. He's going to ultimately yeah. triumph. But it was a good match. Huh. Uh, I thought they did really well. Um, well, that's good to hear that, that Mustafa could actually work with, like, Gunther, their size difference. But. <laughs> That's um, good to hear. We had oh, pockets. What are you doing, pockets? Mustafa had a big sit out power bomb on Gunther. And you see Mustafa, he's a tiny boy. Yeah. Comparatively. He had a big sit out power bomb on Gunther, which was impressive. Um and he did a four fifty splash. Yeah. That, I mean, his 450 splash, I think it might actually be more like a five, a, a little more than a 450 splash. Like, I think it's like a 540 splash. Yeah, I think that is what he calls it. It's a, or a 580. Much or it's called. Oh. larger spin. 480. Um, 480. It was, it was a, Something like that. Yeah. And, of course, Gunther wins. Yeah. I said... They it gave Mustafa his chance, out. and they did it really good. But, you know, of course, we're going with long-term champions right now. Apparently. Yeah, we're apparently going with that. Because, I mean, that's what is happening. Yeah. You know? Because Gunther is someone you need to keep a champion anyway. So, what's the next match that's on the agenda? Then we had a segment 
with Ko and Sammy, and they were talking about some shit. Ko firing up Sammy because Sammy was like, "I don't know if Roman wins, whatever." Blah blah blah. You know, Roman's a really big guy, and he's really you know got a lot of championships, and he could win. You yeah. know, are you worried about that with Ko? And Ko was having to fire Sammy up. It was a pretty good uh, moment, with, moment best with best friendship. With best friendship, yeah, it was good because it's real with them. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's real with them because they've been friends since they were younger and shit. They've been running the ropes since forever, you know? Like, it's crazy how long Kevin Owens and Sammy Zane's been together, guys. So that means another thing. Best friends mean a lot, you know? Like, if you don't have friends, I don't know what you got. You need to have some friends, good supportive friends, people who have got you back, like Kevin Owens has got Sammy Zane. You know what I'm saying? That's all you need in life. Then Little things had, like that. Then we had Bianca. Oh, my God. Oscar. I just noticed that I should have got that House of a Thousand Corpse sticker signed by Robert Muke. You should have. Yeah, that would have been dope, wouldn't it? Yep. But I got something else signed by him. We had Bianca. When I had that moment, <laughs> I didn't think about it. We had Bianca and Oscar. Yeah. Bianca and Oscar. What can I say? Your woman won. Bianca. No, Oscar. Oscar won. That's right. You Oscar told me that won. while I was in Raleigh. Your woman won. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And I said, Jesus fucking Christ, do we have to throw off the heel face algorithm even more? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. How are they going to keep giving us all these heels? Seriously. It doesn't make any sense. Like, damn. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. It was a good match, though. Like, they did an uh, excellent job. Like, Asuka, you know, she's a performer. I yeah. mean, that was, I mean, obviously. Yeah. Bianca's a performer. Yeah. They're both, like, they always bring out the best in each other. We've seen it before. Yeah. Every time they go against each other. It's a great match. Like, it's just okay, good. good. It was good. Yeah. Like, the whole thing, Bianca and Asuka, I didn't. I started getting really high at this point in the pay per view, so I yeah. stopped writing down as many notes. Yeah. Um. Sh- so give me like five seconds. So we might just smoke some more weed in a minute. Yeah. That's indication of that. I got a little more weed on me. We just smoked a Death Star joint. I just got from Raleigh weed though. So. Oh yeah, we did. Didn't they we? gave it an A minus. Oh, you did, didn't you? You know, I was saying a- how minus? good it was. Yeah. They gave like I thought. I thought that what? <laughs> I thought that Rollins and Seth was better than what they gave it. They yeah. gave it a B. I thought Mustafa and Gunther, they gave it an A minus. I think they're pretty accurate with that. Like it was a good damn match. Yeah, I'm like I think we're more accurate with the giving it our review. I want you. I want. I mean, my review of Mustafa, Mustafa and Gunther. Yeah. It was a good match. I mean, I could, like, I gave it, like, a nine. Yeah. I believe you, man, because I've watched so many pay-per-views with you. I understand, you know, when you're talking, you're like, when you talk about matches, you give it the nines and stuff, and I'm like, okay, so I already know where that's at, you know, so. Bianca and Asuka, they gave it a B. I give it, I mean, it's got my girl in it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's got my girl in it. It was go a with it. nine eight point five like somewhere in there it's good um then Rhea Ripley and Natalia okay can I tell you yeah this match just pissed me off yeah why was it even on the card I don't know I have no clue why now what match again because I just lost oh Rhea Ripley and uh Rhea Natalia. and Natalia That's right yeah yeah I knew I knew I heard you right. I told you. I just got Rhea Ripley's Funko Pop last night. Rhea. No, it wasn't last night. It was two nights ago. Rhea squashed Natalia. That match was over in, in no time, less than a minute. Wow, that's crazy. They came in. Yeah. Rang the bell. Yeah. Introduced her. Rhea held up the title. They. 
I think Natalia punched Rhea. Oh, wow. And then Rhea punched Natalia and then picked her up. What's her finisher move? Who? Rhea's finisher move. Oh, that's the Riptide. Yeah, and picked her up and Riptide her and then pinned her. Oh, wow, that's it? That's it. That's crazy. That doesn't even sound right, does it? It was dumb. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it don't make no sense. Unless Natalia got injured somehow, and there is no, like, and she could only do that much? Yeah. It even says it. Ripley lived up to her imposing presentation. The Judgment Day's enforcer immediately pounced on Natalia, filming Dominic Mysterio distracted her. Various... Still, steel steps before rolling her into the ring. One rip tied later, and Ripley defined, de, defended her title in a matter of minutes. It was the most ridiculous squash match. Oh wow! I mean, I just I can see it now. I can see Rhea because that's my girl. I can see her like squashing Natalia, but I wouldn't want her to squash Natalia if I was booking it because I would want both of them to be able to succeed in that. It literally cemented the fact that Rhea was right. Yeah. She's better than Natalia. Yeah. And Natalia was just trying to make her career relevant again. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. I, I mean, this, this pay-per-view sounds crazy. Is there any other matches? There are. I mean, but I'm just pissed off about it right uh, now. I know. It's crazy. But Seven. there's more matches, right? Seven. Maybe. They gave it a C. No, a B plus. I would give it like a D. It was so lame. Yeah, it sounds like a D. An anticlimactic. Sounds like we got the D from the WWE. Nothing. We got bent over. They only had Cody. Cody and Brock. Cody and Brock. Squash match. No. Cody's arm's not broke. Cody's arm is broke. That's ridiculous. It's in a titanium cast. That's ridiculous. To help him be able to wrestle in it with a broken arm. He used the cast as a weapon. And beat the fuck out of Brock. Just really like took over. For a good little bit. That's because he had a weapon. Beat him down with the cast. Yeah. And they were talking about, he's realized that, I started talking to myself as if I was talking to you while you were there. (laughs) And I was like, he's realized that he can use his cast as a weapon. And then right after that, Michael Cole or Kevin Patrick, one of them said it. I was like, nice. (laughs) Um, so, that match, Cody really made a good showing. And, as always, Brock did not beat him yeah. by pin or submission. Cody didn't tap out. Yeah. He didn't get pinned. Yeah. Brock made him pass out. Yeah. Cody passed out. So that made Cody look strong enough for him to be able to lose. Yeah. And it still be... He lost, but he still looked strong enough because he never gave up. Yeah. He never got pinned. Yeah. And so, one and one, Cody and Brock. Yeah. My prediction came true. We've got one and one now. Yeah. You said Brock was going to win. I said he was going to win because we've got one and one now. Yeah. And Cody still looks strong for not having actually lost the match. Really, technically, he can claim that because he just passed out. I mean, he lost by way of knockout. Yeah. But he didn't get pinned or submit. He didn't quit. Okay. Well, that sounds good then because, I mean... Just having a good match between uh, the dynamics of like how little that guy is and how big Brock is, you know, the visuals, you know. It was just a damn good match. Now I think they will go to the next one. Yeah. 
will be either a, either a 16 in Iron Man match or it's going to escalate somehow. Yeah. And I think it should be a classic a classic match style. Yeah. Escalation. Yeah. Based on who Cody is, I think that it should be one of those 60-minute Iron Man matches. It should be what are the um what's the the one is it the Iron Man match where you rack up points? Yeah. Or an I quit match. Yeah. Or something with a stipulation where you have to be really skilled or, you know, barbaric to be able to, you know, yeah, to make win. it to yeah. win. Cody and Brock was a damn good match. And it it was presented as Cody, you know, Cody doing what he has to do, though maybe underhanded, to win against Brock. Okay. And it didn't quite work out for him this time. It did work out for him last time. That's what I appreciate about it. Yeah. And I love Cody. I mean, you love Cody. Nobody that is a fan of wrestling... Doesn't like Cody Rhodes. Yeah. It's just a damn good fucking... It was a damn good performance. Then... We finally got the cracks in the bloodline. Oh, good. I did hear about this. So, Jimmy super kicked Roman... In the fucking face. Because I was listening to Jim Cornette over the weekend and this week. And I did try to keep up with Jim Cornette a little bit. Did Jim, did Jim, Jim Cornette say that Jimmy kicked? Yeah. Roman so I heard about that. That's all. I've been waiting to hear about this because I've been talking. I want, I want to talk about Roman Reigns, man. My mind's been on horror this whole time, you know? Like Roman Reigns getting super kicked and Jimmy. I mean, super kicking. I mean, su- Jimmy super kicking him, and like Jimmy's the one that I've been waiting to just like super kick that motherfucker anyway. So, yeah, yeah, we finally got the cracks in the ball. Finally, the good cracks that we need. Jay tried to keep Jimmy at bay. Yeah, but Jimmy Uso on Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, not this week. <laughs> But last week, yeah, said that he was the tribal chief. Yeah, he did. He said that, and then he proceeded to the Oos didn't even have any business out at ringside. They weren't involved in the match, but they came out, and you thought maybe they were gonna. Help Roman? Yeah. Maybe. And then they didn't? And they did not. They swerved. They swerved us again? They swerved us. They, I mean, Jimmy, specifically, Jay was trying to stop him. Jimmy super kicked the fuck out of Roman. Oh, wow. Twice. That's crazy. And then KO and Sammy won it. The match was beautiful all the way through, though. Yeah. Solo did a good job. We gotta take a bath, baby. Roman, I mean, even for as much as I don't like him, Roman was decent in the match. Like, his wrestling is good. And he did good. I mean, of course, Sammy and KO. I'm gonna call him Cammy now. Why didn't Raymond and what's his name win? I want Roman to win. I'm just playing. I don't want the battle. Why would you want Roman to win? I don't know. We build a feud. Roman and Solo versus Jimmy and Sam or Jimmy and Jay. Yeah. Hell yeah. That'll work. I like that. That'll do pig. So the match was good? So good. Alright, what is there another match? That's it. That's it. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. Night of Champions. That's Night of Champions. We're not out like Elvis Presley yet. Just give us a break. We'll be back in a minute. 
And we're out. And this has been the highest fuck podcast. the highest fuck podcast with your boy Matt with Jackson. your boys Matt Jackson and AKA and Matt Jackson Joe Cool and, and AKA, AKA Joffrey, Joffrey Killa. Killa is always gonna be here. And we're out like, like Elvis Presley, Presley. Baby. Let's go. Yeah.